blowing snow away. In snowbound Minnesota, a certain Jamie Crowder tried to remove mounds of snow by using some gunpowder. <laughs> the young man was house-sitting his parents' beautiful place when he hatched his scheme, which brought a smile to his face. He carefully placed the explosives, then lit a very long fuse. When he blew away the snow, Jamie hoped to make the news. He envisioned a new career involving snow and TNT. He would call his firm Dynablow and would advertise on TV. It would be a booming business, he thought, as he struck a match, then watched the tiny fire approach the gunpowder with dispatch. Boom! The gunpowder exploded and knocked Jamie on his keister. He was so stunned by the blast, for a moment he thought it was Easter. But the experiment worked. All of the snow disappeared. Along with his parents' home. <laughs> Something Jamie had never feared. But he was frightened now. As parts of the house fell on the next town, Jamie wondered how to face his parents' monumental frown. Thank you very much. <laughs> Molly Screwdriver. Three-year-old Molly Whitmore went out to lunch with her mother one day, where she accidentally got a shot of vodka in her glass of OJ. Molly was always a happy child, chatty, bright-faced, and giggly. So her mother didn't notice at first that her daughter was getting tipsy. But when Molly made goo-goo sounds to her juice glass and her bowl of soup, her mother had an inkling. Molly was pretty looped. Molly was not an obstreperous drunk. In fact, she soon became quite docile. She wished her mother good night and went to sleep for a while. A woman once told Winston Churchill at a party that he was drunk. He replied that she was ugly, but by dawn, he would not be drunk. <laughs> In the morning when Molly awoke, she was, like Sir Winston, quite sober. She drank her orange juice without vodka, like any other three-year-old teetotaler. Thank you very much. <laughs>
worked in the kitchen, you bust tables, busting our knuckles for minimum wages, bronzing our pennies in pitchers of beer. Time off came like a champagne pop, let loose wild in a national park, packing our tents and hitting the trail. We were deep in the valleys and we were running up peaks, skinny dipping in a rebel rock creek, counting stars in the Milky Way. We were light as a feather, we were tumbling free, living each day fearlessly. Limitless life, unlimited reach And a top bare peak at the end of July I made love in a field under clear blue sky And you laughed at the grass stuck in my hair And I said, where you were, well I'll be there Wherever you were, well, I'll be there With your angel wings and amber hair Decades gone, it causes me pain How I let the dream get away Oregon and me to Maine We'd finish up college, well that was a plan Meet up next summer and we'd do it again Monterey or conquer France But the year went fast and some things couldn't wait Tentative plans were again delayed And months to years and careers came fast Voicemail and lost address Voicemail and lost address You know I had a choice could have stayed Some mistakes you just can't explain And my courage failed me that awful day I watched your greyhound bus go away Watched the greyhound bus drift away I watched your silent farewell wave. Tonight, though, traffic's a crawl on account of the snow. Ten new messages on my cell phone. I'm running late with nowhere to go And the passenger seat that is next to me Is empty like my life turned out to be Life goes on when none remains And I dream someday well, I'll be somewhere There'll be a tap on my shoulder And you'll be standing there 
Angel wings and amber hair Angel wings and amber hair Thank you. Technological advances wow only the old. That tedious geriatric set who can and oh God do recall life without sliced bread, the wheel, the rail, the rocket, both Saturn and Soyuz. The young maddeningly inured, take mankind's giant leap in blasé stride. Less impressed by the fact of this feat than by the rude, shape-shifting magic of the moon. It's a dark, faraway <clears throat> town, and he has trouble seeing in the dark. You miscalculate time suggests skipping dinner. He's never skipped dinner. Asks you if you ever do anything else with your hair. <laughs> <laughs> at the college jazz concert, you keep glancing at your students two rows back. During the lament, the stomp and ragtime, he ceases to exist. On the way home, you say, I'm going to India, you know. But he likes his own bed, his own toothbrush, and has no desire to travel very far abroad. His lack of syncopation is neither here nor there. This is not Storyville on your doorstep. You've not been pitched into the harmonic scheme. Don't hear that long, trembling note, all the melodic variations. And frankly, you don't give a damn that he, a prosecution lawyer in white Cadillac who's left a wake of houses, eight children, and an ex-wife he calls the saint, says he feels defensive and terribly sensitive to rejection. Huh. Thank you. When I first got on this train three days ago in Boston, I chose to sit in the very last car because I wanted to watch the engine pierce the air at a high rate of speed several cars ahead as we followed close behind. I almost asked the conductor, which direction will this train be going? Though in truth, I already knew. Because long ago, someone somewhere had told me that riding while facing the rear will make you ill from constantly looking back at reverse motion. And I remember hot summer days packed in the back of a station wagon, facing the slipstream and growing sick with motion. But today, on my return trip up the Northeast Corridor, I chose a rear-facing seat and remembered what I had found and forgotten, that riding backwards is a letting go, the scenery passing by and slowly drifting off towards obscurity as we move forward through time. How much better, I thought, than all of this newness that keeps, keeps coming towards us at high speed and which, before we have fully comprehended it, passes in an instant and is gone forever. Thank you.
my heart leaps when I see you. It's love. My heart leaps when I see you. It's like no one else is here. Your features stir my universe. I can feel you drawing near. Although neither of us moves at all, no, it's as if we move the air. And my heart leaps into this world because you're there. From sorrow and from silence, something deeper than the tide seduces. My emerging soul, and now my eyes are opened wide. You are a current, gentle as the dawn. I am a dewdrop on a rose. Come and take me. This is the shore where your love grows. You are. Oh, you are nature's blue-veined child, arousing me, engulfing me in tenderness gone wild. And I praise you, and I protect you, and I pull you to my breast. I'm done with. Hard-hearted loneliness. All those fears are laid to rest. Ah, you move me. You restore it all. You are the answer to my dreams. And my heart leaves. At last, this world is what it seems. First poem is called Not to Complain. Tea. The tea I drank, the tea I made earlier before I left to sing, I drank tonight last thing. I grabbed the tea bag from the Tazo canister marked Passion, a favorite. Tasting the bergamot, an old friend from long ago, didn't register. These days, I don't take any caffeine. So now, after the 20 mile bike ride, the choral concert, the salon, the escape from a rambling drunk, I lie awake, alone, not sleeping. To mechanic, is it me I'm not mad at? When my car came back from the mechanic, the air comfort controller started to flash. Intermittent was the word he used when I called him back. <coughs> Wiggling as many empty words into my phrasing as possible, I said I thought it had been his fault, as he had been messing around in that area to change a bulb. It's not like it doesn't work. It just blinks a lot. He said he would call with a quote. It's been months now. It's on my list to call once more, tell him, Hey, it worked fine you, when you worked it, before you worked in there. Only this time I would call with conviction, but I can't. Three, the marriage bed. You devise divorce in sleep and marriage in wake. You, master of the twin beds. You propose the game of musical bedrooms will double our love. I buy in and lie awake, alone in the other room, in our king size. I churn your missing warmth into missing you, 
and wait for the elegant proof. Okay, this poem's a little more funny. It's called The Skinny. To the airport in mild blizzard, nothing to worry about on the bus. Security, I had it covered, or I thought so. Underneath the blue leggings, the shorts, the three airplane shirts, the jacket, a bikini, my blue one. I stripped down when they told me to stand there, wait and stand after I refused the x-rays. No, 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 you can't undress like that here. Put your clothing back on. <clears throat> wait, I offer up. What's wrong? The last time I remember, the woman, the TSA agent, sniggled her blue fingers, her blue gloves under my bra. I didn't like it. What's wrong? I'm still dressed. They had no protocol for bathing suits. They call the stadies. So now I stop. Stop. Think. Remember all the confrontations with authorities. And I gather up the leggings, the shorts, the shirts, scramble in and smile. She smiles. Right this way, please. Thank you. Eve reclining under a tree held with delight the shiny red knob dropped in her lap by an agile snake. Adam, she cried, come here and see my ripe new toy. It shines so richly in the sun and fits so warmly in my hand. <coughs> Adam came striding up to capture it. Here, let me try. He scooped the apple from her grasp, poked it, sniffed it, polished it bright on the skin of his chest, and bit in deep, then twisted his lips to spit with force the dark embedded seed. Yet, when a disappointed grumble grew in the stretching evening sky, Adam looked out, up and cried out loud, you can't blame me, it wasn't I. Curse her alone and leave me free. I was thinking about you yesterday. Why that was, I just can't say. You broke my heart, I guess that's true. Left me feeling sad and blue. Don't know why you had to go. What you said, well, it just ain't so. You said me, you'd, miss, you'd miss me most of all. But you don't write, no, you don't call. You and I, we once were friends, riding around in your Mercedes Benz, smoking dope and playing tunes. I sure hope you come back soon. When I wake up on Judgment Day, I'm going to have a lot to say about your personality, where you should spend eternity. <laughs> Cold is seeping in through my bones. Yes, it's time to go back home. I look for you along the way. I don't wait long, I just can't stay. Sat down to watch the evening news. There just wasn't too much good news. If Romney doesn't self-destruct, we may just be out of luck. I'll eat my dinner and go to bed. Think about those things you said. Guess it's time to be moving on. This is the end of my song. <laughs> Rising Gary Larson-esque from her Holstein repose. Her almost lucid eye, 
watches as I go by. This repeats field after field as I cycle past. I understand at last the smart cow guards the herd. We have such power within us. Power to harm with a misplaced word spoken in a moment without forethought. Power to bless with a simple phrase of greeting upon the day to a burdened soul. Power to conquer the darkness with our service and the gifting of all we possess within to give. We are all imbued with this power. It comes as birthright to those who know and those who do not know from whence, from whom it comes. All the struggling from one source, all the striving from another, balancing our hearts and minds to witness and perform the miraculous, sweet words, kind thoughts, loving action. Some of us know how to pray for such an awakening. Other, others of us, perhaps the same we, know how to be thankful, how to recognize it when it comes. Thanks to Seth. Thank you.